Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Monday sort of afternoon here in Australia. Markets up ever so slightly. So now two point six trillion dollars. So really kind of hovering sort of sideways. And we're really waiting to see sort of what's going to happen when the markets open Monday morning stateside time. Are we now back to where it kind of pumps during the week and then retraces uh, over the weekends? Again, this always changes. Once it's been in a pattern for too long, all of a sudden it'll start to, you know, pump early in the week and then dump during the midweek and then pump, you know, later on during the week and it's always moving. If it was always the same, everyone would know exactly what to do. And so that's why it changes regularly. But at the moment, we're waiting to see, is it now, all right, we pump during the week, so I you buy Monday morning uh, and then basically sort of sell uh, you know Thursday Friday and then buy back in the following Monday morning and that kind of stuff now again that's never financial advice nothing I ever say is financial advice but there are periods of time if you watch the charts they tend to play out and if you can pick up on them early enough and sort of uh, take advantage of it that's exactly what it is it'll you know it'll be at its cheapest price Monday morning it'll kind of pump through till about sort of Thursday night maybe Friday morning uh, a lot of people start to sell and it goes down over the weekend and then you can buy back in at a cheaper price now again that's more day trading swing trading sort of stuff that is risky uh, and it's you know quite hard to do but if you keep an eye on the charts it has a pattern like for a while it was pumping during the weekends and then going down during the week and that's what we've literally just come out of not that long ago so now we're waiting to see what is the new pattern going to be Right, Bitcoin dominance up ever so slightly, still under 45% though. Bit of volume we can see, so I'd say probably getting ready to come back in for the Monday morning trade. Bitcoin just under 62,000, got up to 67, went all the way down to 59 something. I picked some up at 60,000, so I was lucky enough. I think 60,800 uh, and just a tiny little amount and gas, gas fees are still not you know as high as they've been, but they're definitely not low either. All right, yesterday was a long one, so this one's going to be a quicker one. There's only really two stories I want to have a look at, and that's because it's, you know, again, Sunday evening, Monday morning, not a lot of sort of news is going on. Stateside time, again, is what we're talking about. So let's just have a look at how the market is performing. All right, 24 hours, what's done well in the top 100? Oh, Kadena, good Lord, 36%, nice. Thor rune chain, uh, rune, sorry, Thor chain, other way around, out of nowhere. The graph, uh, a nice pump. Shiba Inu, oh God. Uh, One Harmony, Phantom, look, heaps of double digit movers, safe moon, far out. <laughs> Even that's had a bit of a pump. Kasama, I mean, look, things are looking pretty nice. And again, that's from less than a 1% sort of move. So we got some nice double digit moves. What about losses though? What hasn't performed so well? So Comey, Zcash, Stacks pulling back a little bit, Algorand, uh, Engine, VeChain, Quant, Synthetics uh, pulling back, Aave pulling back. So a number of coins having some small retracements, but really that's all they are. They're ever so tiny retracements at the moment. Not a whole lot is going on there. And again, it stands to show, you know, that's why the market is only up 0.7%, uh, so less than 1%, really traveling sideways. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. Now we can see again, we had that big fake out. And like I said, Bitcoin got down to 59,000, sort of 400, let's just round it to $59,500. So if you had some buy orders set in, you might've been able to snipe some down there, which would have been very nice. But already it's starting to push back. And again, sort of, you know, pump during the midweek, fell off over the weekend and now it looks like it might be getting ready to pump up so again we'll have to wait and see what the pattern is because it definitely gets in a pattern but it just doesn't last for that long it might last a couple of weeks uh, and again it's still not an exact pattern but just keep an eye out for it if you're a day trader and things like that you'll be able to uh, you know and you're watching the charts enough you'll be able to pick up the times that are the, you know the best days to buy and then you can even you know get it down to the best hours to buy sometimes uh, if you're you know that way inclined and really just living on the charts me I'm more sort of DCA and just wait to buy the dip and again I was just simply lucky I bought some Bitcoin the other day and again very tiny amount but I got it for 60,000 I think 600 700 something like that so I uh, had a bit of a move on that already but we still got to break this mark we still got to get sort of above sort of 64,000 down a little bit from it there and what we need to do is start to use that as support rather than really a bit of resistance which is where it's at 
you know, the next few hours when the market opens, again, it's 3.30 in the morning over there. Got to wait for, I don't know what time they open, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, something like that. And we'll see exactly where the markets are at. I expect this to, uh, again, continue to move up. But, you know, time will tell I've been wrong before. And again, I will say this, nothing I offer is financial advice, but I am expecting us to continue moving upwards. All right. Just a bit of NFT news. So, Fidenza Artist sells $7 million worth of Ethereum NFTs to buyers that haven't even seen them yet. So, Tyler Hobbs, he's the Fidenza guy. He has sold NFTs that no one's even seen yet. They haven't even been minted yet. But people have piled $7 million worth of Ethereum to get a hold of them. That is the NFT craze at the moment. It is still just euphoric now not quite as euphoric as what it was earlier people have kind of tapered off a little bit there's so many different nfts out there and look unfortunately most of them will be garbage not not so much for sentimental value and if you just like the art then that's all good but for as but as for you know will they make you money in you know years to come months to come weeks to come yeah, that's really, really hard to say. NFTs will be much like the crypto market themselves. You know, over 10,000 different cryptos out there, you'd be lucky if you probably got one to two, maybe 300 okay ones, and really maybe sort of 100, if you're lucky, to 50, and even that might be pushing it really good ones. And NFTs will be no different. I've got no idea how many NFTs out there, but a very small percentage of them will actually be quality and you know have longevity that's what people are really waiting to see like even the crypto punks i'm fairly confident because they're like the ogs they're going to hold their value extremely well over time but anything outside of those you know board ape yacht club and you know you name it whatever's out there we're really going to have to wait and see the crypto punks again i'm you know almost 100 percent certain as as certain as i can be they will hold their value now it's not to say they won't go up and down and you know have their own kind of cycles yes but i think long term again they're the original sort of nfts i think they will do quite well all right last but not least and so this is for all my australian viewers byron bay is about to become the home of aussie bitcoin mining so Australia's largest Bitcoin mine is set to come online in Byron Bay this week after local digital infrastructure company Mawson Infrastructure Group inked a deal with renewable energy powerhouse, powerhouse sorry, Quinbrook, Quinbrook Infrastructure Partners. So they are going to mine Bitcoin on 100% uh, renewable energy, which is really, really good. So, you know, now we're going to have some, you know, how big a player they're going to be uh, in the overall space. We'll have to wait and see. But it's good to see Australia is finally getting on board. And 100% renewable is the way that it should be. And again, I believe, you know, I want to say all, but that's probably a big call. But near all of Bitcoin mining will be uh, by renewable energies in the not too distant future. It just costs too much money to have it done any other way. You really need that sort of free uh, power source, you know, whether it be from wind, uh, you know, water, uh, solar, you know, all that kind of stuff. Where, yeah, you got to pay for the machinery that will uh, generate the power, but the power is actually not generate the power, uh, bring in the power, but the power is actually generated by the earth itself. That's the cheapest kind of energy and the best kind of energy as well. And I believe that's where Bitcoin mining will go. And look, uh, in the, you know, sometime in the distant future. I'd like it to be sooner rather than later. Again, I think just about everything will be some kind of green energy. I don't think we'll use fossil fuels and things like that. Uh, you know, within the next 50 years, I would be very surprised if anyone was using that stuff. I just don't think there'll be a market for it, but we'll have to wait and see. And that is somewhat concerning for Australia. We're a big coal mining place, but, you know, we've got other things that we can mine other than coal. And look, you know, mining in general is not exactly great for uh, the environment. And, you know, we've only got one earth, so we really need to take care of it. All right, that's it from me. Very quick one today. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that gain train. Things moving up ever so slightly. And I'll see you next time.